What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau back with another video. As you can probably tell uh, by the window, it's late at night, or it could be early in the morning. No, me, it's definitely late at night. Bringing you some informative content when it comes to mobility. You guys have been asking for mobility content. How do I improve my mobility? You know, so I could deadlift better, squat better, bench press better. I put out a few general mobility videos and my views on mobility as a whole has changed dramatically. But one thing is clear, depending upon your goal, you need certain mobility requirements. In this video, we're talking about ankle dorsiflexion and what that is, or some people say dorsiflexion. Uh, but when we talk about ankle dorsiflexion, what we're referring to is how far the knee can travel past the toe as it's related to the ankle, ankle mobility. So. We're going to talk about why you might need extra dorsiflexion, how it can be beneficial, and then how to improve it. The short summary is the following. The more vertical your torso is when you're squatting, the more angled dorsiflexion you'll need. Uh, so front squats, high bar squats are pretty intensive when it comes to dorsiflexion requirements. Also, overhead squats like Olympic weightlifting is pretty intensive when it comes to ankle dorsiflexion, the mobility required. A low bar squat, not so much. Your shins, while they're not probably vertical, the degree of dorsiflexion is not as much as let's say a high bar squat or a front squat. However, for every single individual, I feel it is important to have adequate mobility and we can all improve, we can all do better. I myself, I make these videos and primarily it's through trial and error. What I've learned has helped me along the way because I'm not a mobile individual myself. And we know in order to be safe, in order to be strong, especially when it comes to the squat, that's what I'm talking about, dorsiflexion, having the requisite mobility to perform the movement is crucial. Otherwise you get a broken chain. I could honestly say from observing a lot of squats now, Probably the fastest way for a lot of individuals, if it looks just like broken, like you hunch over, form's not right, knees are caving in, uh, not intentionally, a lot of different issues. It's probably down to mobility, getting that mobility to hit that depth properly. So we want good depth, we want good mobility, we want ankle dorsiflexion. In this video, I'm gonna present to you right now my top picks for the best exercises to try and improve ankle dorsiflexion. We're not gonna talk about anything else, a very specific video. And if you like these videos, mobility videos, make sure to like this damn video and leave a comment below what you want next to be covered in this mobility series, if you enjoyed this. So the first one, this is all trial and error, what I have found has most improved me. Uh, the first thing I have to say, when it comes to weightlifting shoes, I wear them tight. And because I wear them tight, my actual feet get tight over time. And the fascia underneath my feet get tight and that can also inhibit my ankles. So foot gets tight like this, it kind of starts to cramp up, I feel that. It becomes restricted, it restricts other areas of my body. So the first step for me is to roll always with a lacrosse ball or a foam ball, some sort of object that's gonna allow some release. So I'm doing self myofascial release, I'm rolling on the ball on my foot, I'm applying a lot of pressure, I'm actually applying my body weight onto it, it's gonna feel uncomfortable. You wanna make sure while you're doing this that you're squeezing the foot and then you're releasing it. So you're flexing and then extending it. I find this dramatically helps. So the first step for sure for me that I like to do is to use a lacrosse ball in order to get some release. The next step, I'm not as big on foam rolling as I was before, but I do think it can help, especially if you have certain knots in certain areas. And the big thing is you have to be diligent and you have to be consistent. What I like to do then, I take a look at my calves, team no calves, and I roll over with the foam roller, isolating spots that feel really tight, really inhibited. You know, we have three different muscles there when we talk about the calves, we have the gastroc, we have the soleus, we have the tibialis anterior, uh, and you wanna roll around on those areas, just seeing if any spot is inhibited. Another cool fact is that a lot of people that might have tight areas in their calves, it might be limiting their knee or might be causing some sort of knee pain. So I find a lot of times if you ever have a slight knee pain rolling along the IT band, relieving that, getting the fascia along your calves can also help. So that's a quick test I do. How do my calves feel? I've been squatting a lot. Do they feel pretty good? If they do, I'll move on. It's basically a checklist to make sure I have adequate mobility for my goal. Weightlifting has the highest mobility requirements, so I had to improve my mobility. The next step after this would be one of two options depending upon what you have. I personally like to do both 
if you can, I do recommend that. Uh, the first one is going to be from Eric Cressy, my man, a rockin' ankle calf mobilization drill. And what you're basically doing is using your own body weight in a dynamic movement in order to stretch out the calves. And so you're going to lift up, you're going to extend all the way up, then you're going to pull down with the back of the foot, back down, getting that stretch on the calves. The next exercise has to be the band exercise. Actually, my boy Brian Marshall, who's killing it, he's now back into the game when it comes to weightlifting. Shout out to Brian. Uh, Coach Brian showed me. This is, once again, another dynamic movement. So what you're doing, you're artificial extending the range of motion uh, how much dorsiflexion you have you have the band you loop that around I should have had that a little bit lower actually around my ankles and what it's doing is providing some traction it's pulling back and then you're pushing the knee forward so it's feeling that pull it's helping you to extend past your normal range of motion safely so you're pushing past almost in a lunge like manner because you're doing it body weight it should be completely fine you're putting pressure then on that knee to extend past that toe so you're getting a greater range of motion than necessary when it comes to normal squat finally taking a cue from weightlifters who need the most amount of ankle mobility we are going to do a loaded static stretch. The best, pretty much I'd say, uh, exercise for increasing ankle dorsiflexion that I've done and now it allows me to seamlessly hit depth. I'm, I'm never uh, uh, limited by my ankle dorsiflexion now, which I used to be before, is putting a bar instead on top of both of my knees, applying extra pressure. Now, because you have a weight, a load, what it's going to do once again is artificially increase that range of motion. So you'll notice that your knee goes way past your toes and that's perfectly fine. And you're able to maintain with an upright posture, a pretty vertical torso. So you'll hit a good depth, you'll have a vertical torso and you'll see your knees are way past your toes. Hold this for at least a minute, maybe a minute and a half. You could do several rounds of this. This was pretty much the go-to exercise I did initially to increase my ankle mobility. I would say probably has had the most dramatic improvement those weightlifters knew what's up after you complete all these stretches, all these mobility drills, is you want to test, retest. So at the start, you squatted to depth, you saw what your ankle mobility was, how much dorsiflexion you had, and now we want to test again. For me doing this, this is just legitimately me. I was tight on this day. I came in, my mobility was all right, right? Did all the uh, drills, took me about eight to 10 minutes, and then afterwards I tested it again, and I definitely had one to maybe one and a half extra inches range of motion how far past my knees can go over my toes. And that allows me when it comes to the overhead squat, when it comes to the front squat, which I'll describe in an upcoming video how I utilize a new technique, or really pushing down and forward with my legs in order to get a better stretch reflex, better power out of the bottom. It allows me to hit depth, come Comfortably, safely and everything feels great so guys that's the video tackling a very specific topic how do we increase ankle dorsiflexion I needed to learn this the hard way because I started doing weightlifting so I needed extra ankle mobility I find this sequence works the best for me has produced great results try it out let me know what you think below that's it that's the video last thing I'm gonna say as you guys know, I've partnered up with the NASM, that's the National Academy of Sports Medicine. They're offering a free two-week trial. I believe if you want to educate yourself, you should invest in yourself. It's a free two-week personal training certification. Check it out. It's at myusatrainer.com slash Omar. I said this before, but the Canadian certifications aren't nearly as good. This is a good program. If you want to become a trainer or just educate yourself, check it out. That's all the time we have. If you like the video, Make sure to like the damn video. I'll be seeing all you guys, Team No Caps, in that next video. Peace.